Welcome, thank you so much for coming by. What I've compiled is a history in brief on Italy and its history. I just thought that it's something that's pretty important, especially if you're going to learn about Italy. I think it's pretty uh, quintessential, if you will, to know about uh, a few things. Okay, so uh, what is Italy known for? Well, a pretty... Uh, subjective or biased question for me at least uh, you can literally say anything and everything if you were to really dive into italy's history you can easily say and you can easily find that italy is home of lawmakers builders and thinkers this country is also considered the country of art now let's get off to some important history have you ever heard of romulus and remus Romulus and Remus, the legend has it, dated back to the 4th century BC, known as before Christ. Around 753 BC, Rome, known as the capital of Italy, was founded by Romulus with his twin brother Remus. The two were left by the Tiber River, which is the third longest river in Italy. The story behind this is that their mother was not allowed to have children, Rhea Silvia. She went against those commands and was sent to prison. Romulus and, Re and Remus were found by a she-wolf after the river dragged them to the riverbank. The she-wolf then later transported them under a fig tree. So what happened next? A herdsman by the name of Faustulus and his wife Acca Larentia cared for the boys. When the boys matured and became adults, the boys killed Am Amulius, who was the king of Alba Longa. Amulius forced his daughter, Rhea Silvia, as I said before, to not have children, to stay a virgin, reason being so she wouldn't birth any sons to possibly overthrow him as king. Amulius dethroned his own brother Numator, and he killed his very own sons. It is important to know that Romulus was the first of seven kings of Rome. One interesting story is that Remus did climb the wall that Romulus had built and that he felt over. Though this can't be proven, it is interesting to know that this is a theory of how um, Remus has died, or had died. Another story is that Romulus actually murdered his own brother. Once this all happened, uh, and once Remus was all out of the picture, Romulus named the city after himself, thus making it Rome. Romulus, Rome. Notice that the language, uh, this term actually is Latin and it derives from the Latin language. So there's Numator and there's Amulius. So what followed? A Republic. This lasted for roughly 500 years where this is said that it was the first known democratic system in the world. Two consuls ruled, ruled Rome and the Senate made laws. The Republic continued to grow and by the time Christ was born, this system ruled the entire world. However, the birth of Julius Caesar, which is very highly important, had put an end to the consuls. This piece is essential as Caesar played a very significant piece in Italy's history. The laws made then are still into play today, meaning the principles and the very values um, that were made then are followed to the state. So what becomes of Italy then? Well, just because the Roman Empire broke, it didn't mean that it was the end of Italy. Christianity became the epicenter of Rome, and Rome converted as such. The common language followed all throughout was Latin. Latin is the root of all languages. To this day and for the rest of time, Latin will always have an impact on our lang languages. Since the birth of Latin and language in general, poetry has been credited to it. Dating back to around 1220, that's when the earliest signs of poetry became known. Now let's jump to rebellion. There are always going to be those who are rebellious and who will fight for change or separation. There were lands called city-states. A city-state, in short, is a city that basically operates with its surrounding land in acting as an independent state. Milan, Venice, Florence, Pisa, and so many others. Even if I were to step out of Italy and name more, Carthage, Athens, Corinth, Sparta, and Thebes, like around Greece, there are so several more. These times were the Middle Ages, where you saw the knights in the shining armor on horseback, also known as the medieval times and the dark ages. 
Now, because of the fall of the Roman Empire, most, if not all, of the Roman culture and knowledge was lost. The city-states governed themselves. There were ways to gain independence and claim the land as theirs. There, were, there was no foundation or common ground because everyone was fighting. It was either a war or a battle. I want to claim this land or I claim this land. This is why sovereignty was highly important in maintaining land as their own and having jurisdiction. Those who ran the land were officers elected by medieval guilds. They became highly prosperous, and they were the ones to develop the banking systems, what we have today. The most important piece of Italy's history, however, I will say, is none other than the Italian Renaissance. This was the rebirth of Italy. The city-states were swallowed by a local family known as the Medici family. They were from Florence, and they flourished Italy. The Renaissance gave a fresh start, if you will, and dazzled the world with their perennial and eternal works and accomplishments. From painters, to writers, to history, to culture, to philosophy, to architecture, to science, and to more and more, the list goes on and on, Italy finally split up. It did not achieve political unity until the 19th century. That's when the Risorgimento is very important, and what this means is the resurgence. This was the bridge that actually brought unity. It was finally united under the king of Sardinia. There are three men that I want you to know and remember their importance. Those three men are Cavour, who was a statesman, Garibaldi, the redshirt warrior, and Mazzini, the writer and prophet of modern democracy. There's Cavour, there's Garibaldi, and there's Mazzini. Unity. In World War I, Italy fought against the Austrian Empire. By defeating the armies on the Piave River in 1918, it brought about its dissolution. The two last regions remaining to rejoin were finally rejoined. Those two regions were Venezia Tridentina and Venezia Giulia. Today, Italy has a total of 20 regions. It is divided into 110 provinces, which results in 8,100 communes. History does tend to repeat itself because after World War I, the communists and the fascists came to a struggle. The Italian dictator known as Benito Mussolini, also known as Il Duce, came to power. He ruled for about 20 years. In 1940, however, he joined Hitler's war. In 1943, he was finally ousted by King Vittorio Emanuele. The Italians rose against the fascist regime, regime and the Nazis uh, also known as the Germans, thus displacing Mussolini out of power. But Mussolini had a second agenda, where he went on to become the leader of the Italian Social Republic. He then died two years later in 1945. The Italians later fought alongside the Allies for the last 18 months of the war. There is a picture of the king, il re, Vittorio Emanuele. Well, grazie. Thank you for coming by and learning a brief history of Italy with me. I do hope that you've learned. I hope that you subscribe. I hope that you find my videos interesting and appealing. And I hope that you do pick up something on it. Please feel free to watch any of my other videos. And do feel free to subscribe and share, like, and comment. Thanks again, and see you in the next one.